I have always situated poetry and language as a language of desire. My name is Shinyi Pai, and I'm the civic poet for Seattle until the end of uh, 2024. I've uh, been a poet for the last 20 or so years and written, published many books, but I also um, make a podcast uh, part-time with KUW Public Radio about Asian American stories. And for a long part of my career, I worked in nonprofits and arts organizations and have always had a, a simultaneous practice of being a creative person, um, producing events or writing books or making performances. And so uh, my practice as an artist is very wide ranging. I started writing poetry back when I was in, in my late teens, early 20s. I took my first poetry writing workshops when I was a graduate student and undergraduate and really, I think, loved the poetic language based medium. For me, being the child of Taiwanese immigrants, I always felt like there was this language uh, disconnect with my parents, with my mother in particular, because she'd come over much later in her life and not really learned English. And so for me, poetry seemed like this beautiful imaginative space where somehow that could be the, the common ground or place in which we could meet and find one another. I think a lot about design, and so when I work on a book, for instance, the conversations with the designers are always very detailed and in-depth, and that is something that is like really important to me. I am um, very interested in how my work is designed and how it is expressed in the world, because uh, I don't think that books have to just be on the page. I, I feel like they can be sculptural, they can be three-dimensional, and they can have all these other aspects of a physical, sensual, tactile experience for, for the artist. My poetry is very much informed by visual arts. I write a lot about visual artists and art, and that also comes directly out of my relationship with my mother, who is a visual artist. And so um, that was a big part of my early childhood, going to a lot of museums with my family. But when I went to study creative writing later, I chose to do that in art school at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. The best strategy for poetry is not always standing at a podium and reading to a thousand people. That, that's like not the most interesting thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes taking that object-oriented approach or just thinking about different ways in which the senses of the viewer or the listener can be engaged. I I make work that is meant for the body, for the experience. I, for a long time, was a writer that I describe as making work from the neck up. My, my imagination, my brain, <laughs> right? But I think in these later years, especially after having a child, uh, just these aspects of thinking about how um, poem lives in a physical space and how people encounter that space and what their experience is with it, those things are really important to me. When I used to work for Atlas Obscura, planning like, uh, unusual experiences for people, or like when I myself go traveling in Vancouver or a new city, I think there's an aspect maybe of design thinking that comes into those experiences about what kind of experience do I want to have as a human being walking through a space and, uh, and then kind of curating what that experience is going to be in designing it. These toy cameras with film, I'm like so anti-digital. I don't really drive, I like to walk or take the bus. And, and I think it's part of this kind of approach to life of wanting to feel connected to everything that I do or experience. And why would I want that mediated by something like artificial intelligence? Like I, I know that artificial intelligence will probably eliminate a bunch of people's jobs and you know also mm -hmm. have like huge impacts in the world. And I feel like being human is really important. Mm -hmm. And I have like no interest in that. For those who are curious about other disciplines, there's a lot to be learned, I think, in other practices that can be of value. And maybe you still have your core practice, which is whatever it's going to be. I think having that curiosity to tie, tie the loose ends together for oneself to sort of understand what the full range of what a creative life and a creative practice can be.